Footland on today's episode, we're never not working again, looking at a new stat, a new way to dive into targets, and where we're going, we don't need roads. It's the fantasy time machine finding this year's David Montgomery, this year's Kirk Cousins. Remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology provides a continuous, invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, today's show brought to you by Omaha Steaks, one of our personal faves. You know that we love grilling, love those Omaha mm. Steaks and burgers. Labor Day is around the corner, so it's time to get ready for that last cookout of the summer. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar, and order the deluxe grill-out assortment. It includes over 30 entrees like bacon-wrapped <laughs> filet mignons, <laughs> oh, oh boy. filet mignon burgers, Bleh. boneless pork chops, gourmet franks, sides, desserts, and more. Plus, you'll save over 50%, and you'll get 12 free burgers. They're, these are basically a steak between buns. Visit omahasteaks.com. Oh. Keyword footballers save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill out assortment. Plus, get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and enjoy the last cookout of the summer. That's omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, September 2nd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway back with you. This time next week, we'll oh. be talking about, oh. well, it'll be football time, Mike. Yes, it will. I mean, this time next week, we'll be doing starts of the week, right? Yeah. Wow. Tom Brady every week <laughs> at quarterback. Our, the week one starts of the week. It's just our my guys. <laughs> uh, I tried to acquire Tom Brady yesterday. In and, the league of record? Yes. Yes. Who is uh, my league? My week one opponent is Al Borland, who uh, our fearless uh, producer back there. Um, I tried to pull off the largest trade our league has ever seen. I heard tale of this Did from you? you. Oh, from me. That basically that sentence. Oh, okay. Just now or no, okay. no. I, you you had mentioned that it was like a mamma jamma. It was a ten player trade. <laughs> I was trying to set just the, swapping teams. Trying to set the league on fire with a, my league one opponent. A ten player yeah. trade. There were all sorts of stars. Five on each side, to be clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's what it. Yes, <laughs> swapping teams would be the nine ten. to one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a nine for one deal, which I always say get the best player in the deal. Uh, no, it was it was close. I think maybe. Uh, it just, yeah, it wasn't a bad deal. It just wasn't, uh, my team couldn't have survived without the running back you wanted. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I got somebody to say it wasn't a bad deal on one of my trade offers. Impressive. Uh, not just somebody, but me who's right. usually very critical of your, right. your offers. Uh, and I didn't include Sony Michelle in the deal cause I respect you as a person. Yeah. Instant reject. Doesn't matter. What <laughs> I know. Else is there. I know. Even if, if it was six to five on the trade, but Sony was in there, it would have been worse than leaving him out. Correct. Uh, we have never not working on the show today. Excited to talk about some uh, deeper insights, some things that uh, Mike has been digging into. We brought them up briefly on our live Spotify green room yesterday afternoon. Thank you for everyone. Oh, that, man, that was lit. That joined us. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We got NFL news to talk about and today's main event. Am I, 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 correct? The fantasy time machine. <laughs> so we'll be jumping into the fantasy time machine. We'll be on the hunt for this year's David Montgomery, this year's Stefan Diggs, this year's Logan Thomas, this year's Kirk Cousins, all players with kind of a, a specific 
breakout campaign last year, right? Mm -hmm. And so we'll talk about those. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason's at Jason FFL. Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. The community, 20,000 strong over at jointhefoot.com where you get a bonus weekly episode of the show. You get premium perks. You get uh, the Megalable entry. That's all at jointhefoot.com. And there are many articles going up every day on our website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's get it going. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Every little bit helps the fantasy football player win their league. And if you stack a little bit of extra work each and every week, it adds up to a lot. It does. I was trying to think of what's a good analogy for it. And it's like, you know, when you're out there, uh, like you're, you're panning for gold. All yeah, I know. I do that all the time. Uh, back when you were a 49er right. out in the old gold rush. Mm. But I'm saying like the, the, you're adjusting your sifter and you're able to, to, to get more of the, uh, the more of the goop, the silt, the dirt. And you're just okay. trying to leave behind the gems and the more, data points the more things that you can look at that helps you do that sifting and i have never heard of silt and i am thoroughly impressed <laughs> with that vocab oh, word it's incredible it's, i mean <laughs> silt is fine sand clay or other oh, you were googling oh well, i didn't know what silt was but now i now i do thank you much silty smooth that's yeah. what they say <laughs> uh and so we've talked about on the show targets are skill-based a player's not going to be a wide receiver's not going to be running out there getting targets if they're not a good player. If they're not getting open, if a quarterback doesn't trust them to make a contested catch. And we thought or we, and you look at target share, that's a good indicator of, you know, this player is pulling in 20% of the, of this team's targets. They're going to be a go-to for fantasy football, but is there a another way that we can look even deeper into targets? So we're starting to look at uh routes run the percent of your routes that you are actually targeted so you know trying to uh, eliminate some of that noise just sift a little bit deeper and we took a look at wide receivers who are seeing 60 plus targets because it's helping us to find some gems like the big thing that stands out here which i didn't have this data when i was making my uh, my bold proclamation on, on antonio brown but last year on 26% of his routes, Antonio Brown saw a target. So you can see the Antonio Brown ends the season 62 targets. That's not an impressive number. Well, okay, how many games did he play? There's some other things. But look, when he was on the field, how much was he actually targeted? And it's, it's a very impressive number. I want to run that back again real quick before you jump into those. Yes. Just the percent of routes targeted so when they're on the field when they're actually running yes. a route where they're eligible to be targeted how often are they targeted and I would think this would also come down to players that their quarterbacks like you said they trust them maybe they're favorites of the quarterback as well yeah yeah exactly and are, are they out there just being a distraction you know there's running routes trying to get other people open and like, so the names you would expect are there. Devontae Adams is at the top. Keenan Allen is at the top. 31% for Devontae Adams, which yes. is super impressive because of the, just the volume, right? Like even how often he's out there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's, it's really impressive that the number one in percentage of routes targeted also runs a ton of routes. Yes. Draft Devontae Adams. And then you can look at other tier names like Jacoby Myers, 24% of his routes he was seeing a target. Like he was a go to for this team. Chase Claypool, I had, had, he saw a target on over 23% of his routes, which was the highest among rookies. When he was out there, Ben Roethlisberger was finding a way to target him. And so these it's you, you have to filter this information through some other lenses, but it's it's helping us locate some of these gems, but it's also helping you locate guys that you know maybe we should have faded them a little bit more. Like last year, guys who who did not see a target on more than 20% of their routes, you know, it was like DJ Chark, Galladay, these guys were uh, – Chris Godwin. Maybe their their fantasy finish was just a little bit too efficient. It doesn't mean they're bad players, but 
you know, how Godwin was the wide receiver too. Maybe it was like, okay, he overproduced just a little bit too much. Let's put him down into that 10 to 15 range instead of just looking at last year's uh, production and saying, well, yeah, he can absolutely duplicate that. So this is just, this is a new thing that we are looking at here at the Fantasy Footballers, and so far the correlation is it's very interesting. A percent of routes run, you get a target, and your fantasy finish. And so the actionable advice for this year is interesting names that maybe you should bump up are Antonio Brown, Chase Claypool, Jacoby Myers, like I said, but then Sterling Shepard, Corey Davis. These are guys that were commanding targets on – uh, over 20% of the routes. Meanwhile, players that maybe they overproduced on uh, uh, the the percentage that they were getting, Mike Evans saw a target on fewer than 20% of his routes. That's a little that that's an interesting data point when you factor in how often that Antonio Brown was seen a look at the end. Juju, Mike Williams. Mike Williams has been one of our favorite late round sleepers because of the talent the ability, Justin Herbert's a good quarterback, and yet he was only seeing a target on just under 17% of his routes. That That is not that is not going to translate or correlate to fantasy success unless that somehow sees a massive uptick. And it, so, again, this isn't everything. We're just trying to highlight these other analytics and deep dives that we are doing behind the scenes to try and give you the best information. Yeah, a good example is 2019. Diggs was dominating this, and then yes. you know that could have been a precursor to his talent and switching uh, teams, getting what turned out to be a quarterback upgrade, um, and then the, and then the huge breakout. I can't help, I can't help but notice number ten on this list. Oh, give it to me. Oh, top ten. Robbie Anderson, baby. Robbie Anderson. Oh, she was yeah. seeing a target on over 24% of his routes. I think what would be interesting, too, to extend this, and maybe the Borgogan can do it, would be to look at players that fit this mold that, that end up with a high percentage of routes targeted but maybe had lower snap counts or maybe dealt with some injuries or their end-of-year numbers were reduced. You know, Claypool is a great example where he was clearly not on the field all the time. Right. So that number jumps out to me. When they put him on the field, the team, you know, it's almost like this is a go-to receiver chart mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. When you look at these names and you think of the most hyper-targeted players, everyone knows Deontay Johnson is the, the favorite emergency target. Stephon Diggs is the same thing. A.J. Brown, even though the volume wasn't there, it was like, man, when I need he a was play. He dude, yeah. Yeah. And then one that jumps out in the higher end here is Emmanuel Sanders. Like, yes. You would not have imagined Emmanuel Sanders to finish this high. He just wasn't out on the field as much. But what if he is in Buffalo? Like, he was getting targets in the preseason. That's an interesting name. Um, Cooper Cup being at that number is interesting, too, because there's some positive touchdown regression there. And so maybe we can get an article out with some of this information. Yeah, so we're, we're very excited to see where this... Or you're fired, Kyle. <laughs> we're very excited to see uh, if this correlation can keeps translating and this is a trend that can take some analysis to a, just an, another level up. All right, that'll do it for Never Not Working. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's Never Not Working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. This news actually broke during our Spotify Green Room live event yesterday. Rashad Bateman, Miles Boykin both put on the short term injured reserve for the Baltimore Ravens. And, well, somebody returned to practice. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby. Bloody. If you notice, the graphic for the Lizard King on our show has changed to Team Agnostic <laughs> because we know he'll be playing on different teams every year. Our it graphics didn't. department was working overtime with all these Sammy Watkins changes. Yeah. Um, in addition, he's to in that, his lizard uniform. <laughs> in addition to that, uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown also returned to practice uh, yesterday as well. Is that why you drafted him late in the Listener League draft yesterday? It was a combination of the fact that he is back and that they took his recovery slowly, and I have Lamar Jackson. So I got, wanted, wanted one of those hopeful, maybe late-round stacks. I got regularly sniped 
in yesterday's Listener League. It's hard to draft with people who literally listen to hundreds of hours of you talking about your opinions on fantasy football. Yeah, I was like one pick away from my player three or four Every times. Time. <laughs> By the end of the draft, I felt beat up, but uh, that was a good time. Jamison Crowder sat out of practice with a groin injury. Duh! Groinindex.com, newest member. Uh, Brashad Perryman signed a one-year deal with the Bears. Okay. Uh, Carson Wentz, Ryan Kelly, Zach Pascal, all activated from the COVID-19 list. That's good. And T.Y. Hilton got placed on short-term IR. This was something where, you know, it's a neck injury. There's re-injury risk. I, was, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was year-long and the season was over. So I guess... Yeah, it's worth pointing out that the short-term IR, sometimes people are confusing. That means they will be back in three weeks. It means they're able to come back in three weeks. That is no guarantee that they'll be back week four. All right. Uh, we do have Gio Bernard dealing with a mid-high ankle sprain. Okay. Well, he's supposed to play in week one against Dallas. He's yeah, that we'll Thursday night game a week from today. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's something to pay attention to. I mean, because Gio was going to take – the majority of those running back targets away from Ronald and Leonard. A mild high ankle sprain. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, that is the first I've heard of that. I mean, it's it, if he has a high ankle sprain, I would imagine that's too much for him to play football. It's mild. But it's mild, so... It's not spicy. Yeah. Um, Royce Freeman was waived from the Broncos, and I bring that up because Mike Boone is on the short-term injured reserve... It's Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. That is correct. <clears throat> I am I am preparing myself mentally for the end of week one and that the number one wide receiver in fantasy football is Adam Thielen and the number one <laughs> running back in fantasy football is Melvin Gordon. Yeah, that's, I, we're I, trending that way. I'm ready for those two names to <laughs> pop up and everybody to say, where was all the hype about these guys? Because Melvin Gordon's going to be viable for a while. To start the season, yes. And I don't I just don't think that this is the kind of team that's going to they paid him a lot of money, and if he's good, they're at least going to share time with him. Maybe Javante ends up with the majority of the committee at some point, but have you seen anything that says Melvin Gordon slowed down? I mean, he looks great to me. No, I I, I really do think Melvin Gordon will be the leader of this timeshare. Um and, and I think by the end of the year it'll be It'll be 50-50, and I wonder if the team ends up doing well with Teddy, if it turns out where this offense is, is clicking, and that is certainly no guarantee. But if that happens, I, I, I question whether they could both be viable fantasy assets at the same time, similar to how I view Trey Sermon yeah. and Raheem Mostert, yep. where you might be able to play both of those guys in the same week. Completely agree. I, I think people just don't want to draft or play Melvin Gordon. Correct. Uh, Guilty as charged. Which I, I understand, but those are the those are the sneaky players all the time that happens. Uh, all right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Uh, definitely hop over on the Sleeper platform. Switch your league over there, and uh, they've always got new and exciting upgrades happening on the platform. Now, I am I am ready to step into the DeLorean. I wish we I wish tall people could fit. It's not – We've. I've tried to sit in one. Yes. It's not comfortable. No, it, it was not made for – Time travel's not comfortable, Not though. made You've for heard the modern that. man. Right. Are people taller now? I think so. Yeah, for sure. I you would, go back and look at the, the historical – we did the live show, you know, in Chicago where the, mm -hmm. the, this historical place that was built 100 years ago. The hallways are – the hall. you guys are like ducking in the hallways. Everything was very small and tiny. It does seem that way, and even like um, – uh, seeing Broadway shows in New York, mm -hmm. you go to you go to classic theaters. Enjoy those. These seats. weren't made for human beings that live today. No, my children could barely fit in them. But even old roads have smaller lanes. So how does that work? Well, well the Hummer going. Change, the Hummer changed everything. Roads. The Hummer changed everything. And like Michael J. Fox made it look like it was just. Oh, he's a little guy. Very comfy. And Michael J. Fox is five four. Oh boy. Is he really? Is he five four? Yeah, according to the Google machine. Well, Google's never been wrong. <laughs> Never. Uh, all right, so we're going to hop into the time machine momentarily. want to thank today's sponsors supporting the podcast, keeping us going. Uh, Indochino. You've heard us talk about Indochino lately. And uh, when I think about what Indochino brings to the 
to the world. It is affordable, custom, tailored suits. You are correct, sir. So you don't look stupid. I brought up yesterday, I am constantly dealing with like large, extra large, tall, short. I need tailored shirts Yep. because we're not all the same. Not every large is the same large. And Indochino is uh, bringing out that something special for you. You can, they just make it easy too. This is not some long, overblown, all day process. You can stop by a, sh a showroom or a Nordstrom, or you can do it online and just submit your measurements. So easy to personalize. Uh, custom fitted suit, shirts, casual wear. Like I said, now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get a great fitting and personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. And football is right around the corner. You can get One in week. on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. DraftKings is giving new customers $200 dollars in free bets instantly when you bet one dollar or more on any football game listen up you don't want to miss it you head to DraftKings Sportsbook get the app now and place a bet of one dollar or more on any week one game to receive two hundred dollars in free bets instantly and if the sportsbook is not yet available in your state DraftKings still has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season long with their daily fantasy contests Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS when you sign up to receive the $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game and get a free shot at a million-dollar top prize with your first deposit. That's promo code BALLERS for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. You must be 21 years or older, New Jersey, Indiana, and Pennsylvania only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit, $1 wager required, one per customer, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Oh. And the wind chimes. Oh, the wind chimes. That's the, the tasty harmony into the chimes. I could listen to that all day. No, I've moved that one up my rankings. I've, I've totally forgot, <laughs> forgot that was created. That's at the top now. All right. The premise of this segment is if you could travel forward in time, who could be this year's version of a number of players that stood out last year? So let's find 2021's David Montgomery. So what we're talking about, and it doesn't have to fit this exactly, but what David Montgomery represented last year was a running back outside the top 40 picks. In an ambiguous backfield, right? Tariq Cohen was there and threatening and has a chance to see a 70% of, you know, 70 plus percent of the workload has a nice end of season schedule. Maybe that was something that held David Montgomery, but you know, what is this year's who has the highest odds of being this year's David Montgomery when you consider some of those elements? Uh, for me, it's now James Robinson. James Robinson Ooh. is a player who has certainly been disrespected, um, not just by fantasy, but maybe by his own his team. His own team, yes. I mean, he was awesome for you last year, comes in, was great for fantasy. He was the running back seven, and then you spend a first-round pick on Travis Etienne. However, we all know at this point Travis Etienne lost his season um, due to an unfortunate preseason injury. And now the whole reason why James Robinson can't repeat as that top 10 type running back that he was last year is 31-year-old Carlos Hyde. I mean, I get it. Urban Myers loves Carlos Hyde, was with him. But I think as the year goes on, uh, I, I think Carlos Hyde is probably going to be seen for what he is. 
a 31-year-old running back who's not that good. And I think James Robinson gets the ball more and more. He's capable in the pass-catching game, just like David Montgomery was. I think his offense could surprise and be better. Obviously, it should be better than last year. If Trevor Lawrence comes out, has a great year, and James Robinson's involved in the passing game, I, I think you could see – I mean, we, we saw last year. Uh, put it this way. Every time we were watching games last year together, the three of us, mm -hmm. we were just blown away by James Robinson. Not analytics – I mean, he got the whole market share. That's why he was uh, the running back seven. But just watching, it was like, man, he never goes down. He always gets – it's like, it's another six yards, another seven yards. It was just – he's a quality back. And I think in the end, he's going to get enough workload. Um, he can he can catch the ball. He can score touchdowns. So he's my uh, call on David Montgomery of 2021. Do you think that they respect him now that ETN's been hurt? Because you said I, they, they disrespected him, they, they drafted ETN, they signed Carlos Hyde. I think they disrespected him um, when they drafted him. I, I don't think it's that they don't respect him. I, I believe it was more the fact that they wanted to bring in Trevor Lawrence's guy from college, give him um, you know that, that extra confidence and comfort. I think but they that, also but that's speed. James, sure, like James yes. Robinson, the top end speed for James Robinson is – is not close to what Travis Etienne has. For sure. But you want to know who makes James Robinson looks, <laughs> look fast? Carlos Hyde at 31 years old. All right, Mike, who's this year's David Montgomery to you? So I, I went back and forth on this one between uh, my pick and Mike Davis from the Atla Davis on the Atlanta Falcons, which I don't know if you guys saw this because I had missed it. You know who's listed number two on the depth chart at the running back position? Herschel Walker. Cordero Patterson. Okay, that makes sense. They have no one. Yeah, I just like I mean, you figured it was Olison, but that does help. It's that's the just, case for Mike Davis. Yeah, and so it's like it. Davis seems like he should be the guy, and then look at the players behind him, and he really should be. Do you know who was David Montgomery's backup running back last year? <laughs> Cordero, Cordero Pat Patterson. Well, there you go. Maybe I'm gonna switch my pick because well, the Falcons' end of season schedule, at least right now, looks juicy. But I'm going with Chase Edmonds. Okay, of the Arizona Cardinals. He's he's a player that. We don't yet know what type of workload he is going to be. He should be the primary ball carrier for the Arizona Cardinals, and he has he's been their pass catching specialist. So I mean, when you fuse those two things together, you're looking at a player whose his ceiling is tremendous. Should he receive that workload, he will break out on on Arizona that projects to be a good offense. And then I was looking at the end of the season of it's not looking at the end of season schedule right now is a dicey proposition because uh, things change so much. But in his playoff run, he gets the Lions, the Colts, which isn't my favorite, but and then the Cowboys. I mean, the Lions and the Cowboys in that three-game stretch, I would be pretty surprised if both of those teams can shore up their, their defense in time uh, over the season to, to stop Chase Simmons from having a good run at the end of the season. All three of our picks are from the fifth round right now in fantasy drafts. Mine's Miles Gaskin. Uh, when I think about what David the Montgomery did man. at the end of last year, it was not just a run of good games. It was a run of top 10 games. It was a run of like weak winning games. And Miles Gaskin can do that because he brings so much in the passing game. Um, the last, pff, I think, six games that he played, he was a top 20 running back, but three of those, he was a top 10 running back last year. And so uh, I like his potential to go, you know, 1,800 in this oh offense. Oh, my. And you talk about ambiguous backfield. Oh Malcolm my. Brown is the Tariq Cohen to the, the situation. Uh, did you say starter? <laughs> did need, you say Andy, starter? I need it. it. You dirty man. I'm speaking it into existence. Oh, because you drafted Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown, I need you. Oh. I mean, speak, <laughs> speaking of drafting, you grab this is this is a, a real call that you believe in. Um, you drafted Miles Gaskin in the second round last night in the listener league. It's a draft. fourteen teamer. Fourteen teamer, yes. But that's, that's I mean, so this is this is you you have put your money where your where your mouth is here. You you really truly believe Miles Gaskin has the chance to be David Montgomery. This isn't just picking a name out of a hat right, that right. you don't believe in. Yeah, I've definitely there's no player I've risen more on, I think, into the season than Miles Gaskin. And uh he is the opposite case, in my opinion, of what the Jacks what Jacksonville did to James Robinson. Like we all walked away from the draft going, 
oh my gosh, the Dolphins with all that capital did not invest on a young running back. Right. Uh, I think that shows the confidence they have in Gaskin to do a lot in the offense, not everything. He's not built to do everything. But a lot for a player that catches passes is pretty darn good. So uh, let's look at finding 2021's Stephon Diggs. It is still mind-blowing that this is a player that went outside the top six rounds in fantasy – or five rounds in fantasy football. Last year, his average draft position was 603, the wide receiver 27, off the board. Fast forward or hop in the DeLorean yeah. and, and travel to now, and we know Josh Allen went nuclear – Bills went from 200 passing yards a game to almost 300. Yeah, if you would have told me that was going to happen, I would have ch uh, changed my outlook for Stephon Diggs. So this is a player that's outside the top four rounds, has room for the quarterback to improve or the offense to take a leap, has a chance to be a target hog. Um, so who is your 2021 Stephon Diggs candidate? Um. The, who I uh, similar to to Mike? How he? <laughs> you sound skeptical. If you're well, sick. the reason I'm skeptical is because I want to I want to do what you did at the running back position. The the player that oh, I take think your backup. The player that I think matches it the best. I just refuse to put my name on. <laughs> so okay, but it's it's Odell Beckham Jr. He's going in the same spot that uh that Diggs went last year. He's a known great wide receiver from the past who's. Not been there for fantasy, so you know. But uh, I refuse that. I would never. I would never pick Odell Beckham. Um, I'm going to go with Corey Davis. Um, when I look at a highly drafted, good route running, somewhat disappointing wide receiver left for dead, changing teams like Stephon Diggs did to an offense that we presume is bad, but maybe it's good. We haven't seen Zach Wilson, and if Zach Wilson really comes on and lights the world on fire. I mean, you got Tony Romo out here saying he thinks he's a he does a, a, one of the top guys he's going to compete with Patrick Mahomes. He's got that level of talent. Um if if something like that were to happen and a breakout happen, I think Corey Davis could be the target hog. I mean, I know in preseason uh you had some games without Elijah Moore, but they paid a ton of money to bring Corey Davis in here as their one. Um, and I think he will be their number one wide receiver this year. So I, I, I find it hard to make the leap all the way up to, to you know, the, the one part of the Stefan Diggs comp that clearly doesn't ring true is I don't think he can be a top five wide receiver, but I do think the, you know, but he's also not going in the sixth round like Diggs was last year. I think that same jump from basically the sixth to a first rounder can happen with, Corey Davis being a ninth rounder to like a third rounder next year. I don't think Elijah Moore played any preseason games. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't so. think he had any snaps. And no, Corey Davis is going the latest of our three picks. I mean, he's he's almost a tenth round pick. He is, so. and that and that uh, the data point that we brought up in never not working the percentage of routes targeted. Right, Corey Davis scored very well on that metric. He saw a target on. 23.6% of his routes. I also like that it fits the switching teams storyline. Yeah. Uh, Mike, who is your Stefan Diggs candidate? This so year? my wide receiver is also switching teams. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> switching, Fair. Switching from Alabama to the <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going the rookie Devontae Smith. Uh, he's always open and like, as much as I want to to bang the drum for Jalen Rager and say this second year wide receiver is going to have a breakout, I mean it's up and down with Rager. It, he showed up to camp out of shape. It's like the news on Rager is you you just can't buy into it, and then you only see Devontae Smith in a very limited amount of preseason action, and it was oh well look the BMI doesn't matter because you can't stop this dude off with a line. He gets open and talk about Heisman winner yes uh, yes a, a, a player who put up one of the most prolific wide receiver seasons of all time he was just absolutely elite you have the situation with the quarterback there like Josh Allen it, in hindsight questioning Josh Allen a year ago was the right thing to do he went from one of the worst passers in football to one of the best Jalen Hurts currently being very questioned can he be a can he be a starting quarterback? Can he be a franchise quarterback? And 
So I think that a lot of the narratives align here, and you're getting Devontae Smith the back of the seventh, the early eighth round, and I think that he can immediately jump into the top target share for the Philadelphia Eagles. I wonder if the real answer to this question is Kenny Galladay because yep. it could be because he has the like Diggs has never been. We never questioned Diggs the the talent, right? Even in Minnesota, it was always like uh, you just kind of kind of got fatigued right with him not seeing enough targets and then he switches teams and it was Josh Allen was the problem right yes. right and then and then you know yesterday it was like who gets stuck with Kenny Galladay in our, our listener league draft and it was me and it was Mike <laughs> and it was not like Mike was not happy when he did it he's just like okay and so I do wonder if that's the real answer I'm gonna go with DJ Moore though um outside the fifth round actually the first pick of the fifth round right now by ADP you look at those marks of Stephon Diggs last year. Room for quarterback improvement and the offense to take a leap. Well, Jason made, Let's the, go, Darnold. made the case for Sam Darnold to I improve that offense. Chance to be a target hog. Yes, uh, he does have that opportunity. And he has a similar deep target profile as Stephon Diggs. You know, he, he's been peppered with targets this preseason, so he's kind of standing out to me as the player that Darnold is going to look to the most and can make the most big plays. I think he's one of the best real – wide receivers in football so to me dj moore could be one of those names that right now fifth sixth round end of year we're like oh dj moore is what we thought he was he scored eight times i mean Diggs Diggs did it last year on what seven touchdowns yeah or it, eight touchdowns it was not the prolific number dj moore reminds me of someone that can you know if, if you hit him 15 yards down the field near the sideline just like Diggs, like he'll just run back to the middle of the field, kind of break a, a tackle, and and can house it. Um, all right, let's find 2021's Logan Thomas. Now this one is, I mean, it, of course, finding the the new Stephon Diggs is valuable, but finding that late round tight end gem is difficult, but it is very very valuable, and it is super like satisfying as a fantasy player to identify yes. the tight end and then be able to lock them in and say I found something no one else found very hard to do Logan Thomas that prototype that we're talking about late or undrafted tight end that still has a chance to be the second or third in targets Logan Thomas just ended up being a go-to receiver for them and then uh, we can throw in the interesting athletic measurables although it does not fit my pick for this uh, <laughs> Mr. Clean. Uh, so we'll see. W who's this year's Logan Thomas for you? For me, it is Gerald Everett. Uh, he has the athletic profile. We know yes, that he he's does. a ninety-first percentile uh, athletic measurables. He really can get it done on the field, and I think he comes into a role right now where he is the number three in targets. You've obviously got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, locking it down. So he is not able to break into the top two as the roster currently stands. But as the third option in this offense, we've seen in years past, I mean, Big Montana had crazy success. Yes, he did. Um, and then he got injured, and then it was like, okay, we'll bring in Greg Olson. But Greg Olson was a shell of his former self. He's an old man on the field. Now – it, it's Gerald Everett. They paid him money to come over to be a part of this team, and I think the opportunity is there. But the other thing I, I you know, I, I want to point out, like, it's only those two wide receivers. They're very shallow here. We talked a lot in the early off season about Tennessee and what if they lost a guy. But if either Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf happens to go down for a period of time, I think he will become kind of like Logan Thomas, very necessary. He's, you know, with a with a better quarterback situation. So um, while right now, if I'm drafting Gerald Everett, it is a hundred percent based on a streaming option. It's mm -hmm. matchup play. Um, it I, should, this pick should sound stupid. Just putting it out there. It should sound illogical that these players could do it. Logan Thomas sounded that way last year. Right. And I'm not saying that about your pick. I'm just saying all these names should, the reason they're undrafted is because nobody's really projecting or predicting it. But Everett a hundred percent fits that. And and switching teams, like, you know, Logan Thomas, it took him a little while. He switched teams before he had the breakout campaign. And Everett has always fit that athletically. In fact, he's had those plays where you, you look and you're like, that's one of the top five tight ends in football. He's had those games. Even with Jared Goff, I, not a lot of tight ends can run a, you know, uh, 
a route like a wide receiver down the sideline and catch mm-hmm. a fly pass the way that Gerald Everett can. Yeah. Mount Everett. <laughs> yes, Mount. I, I would now, be Will, happy. Will Disley is still there, though. Yes, but he is. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Any chance to push the button, Big Montana? <laughs> I missed it earlier. Right I couldn't that find moose. it. Uh, yeah, so uh, trying to find that tight end, finding the path forward. Uh, speaking of money, Johnu Smith got a lot of money from the New England Patriots. You're talking a four-year, fifty million dollar contract to come in, and unfortunately, in the off season. That buzz was destroyed because shortly after the Smith contract was announced, Hunter Henry was signed by the New England Patriots, and it was ow, it was like the the Price is Right. It was it was really sad and disappointing, but the path is still there for for Johnny. I I think that yes, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's for the Hunter Henry signing. Thank you. Uh, I think that Jacoby Myers will be the target leader. He'll be the the slot wide receiver for this team. But then who is number two? Is it Nelson Aguilar? Is it John U. Smith? Like the, you, the question can be fairly asked and he has the talent, the athletic profile to come in and be that guy who is, who is the number two guy. He was, he's taking snaps out of the backfield, uh, which that doesn't necessarily get me real excited that those are high uh, leverage touches. But the point is, the Patriots want to figure out how do we get the ball to Janu so we can let him do his thing and move the ball down the field. So I'm, I see the path for him to emerge as the number two guy for the Patriots. It, it's We were driving to lunch yesterday, Jason and I, and talking about the two biggest fantasy blind spots at tight end. Janu was the na- one of the names we brought up where it's like for some reason we're it's, not looking it's his Hunter direction. Henry. Like that completely to me, it feels like that mangled the the potential hype and hope for what he could be. It mm-hmm. is a hundred percent, but that that impact happened on signing day, and right. it's like ignoring all the evidence after signing day. Well, like, and the fact that Henry's been injured, yeah, He's, Henry is not there. And the other name we brought up is my pick for this year's. I mean, plug yours, Mike. What an insult to this man's career that he is now being called. This year's Logan Thomas, <laughs> but it is it's it's better than this man deserves. It is the number one or two target. Yes, for the Philadelphia Eagles, Zachary Ertz, the great forgiver of sins, because because he has apparently come to terms yes, he has. with the the Eagles' uh, <laughs> leadership. That he has forgiven them. He said for all of their disrespect slash trying to shop him as hard as they tried to shop him. Zach Ertz is undrafted. And if I already said week one, you're going to have Adam Thielen, the number one wide out Melvin Gordon, the number one running back and Zach Ertz is going to end up the number one tight end in week one. Just get ready. Fantasy fans, because he's, he's, he might be their number one target. Like you it's brought possible. up Devonta Smith. It might end up being the target leader. Zach Ertz on this team, the preseason Jalen hurts has been looking at Zach Ertz a lot. And if if everything is emotionally fine between the team and the player here, like Jalen Hurts needs somebody to throw the ball to, and we're not paying attention to Zach Ertz, and especially in a PPR league. I mean You look at the preseason usage of Ertz versus Goddard, and and you're you're right. It's like Ertz probably ends up with more <laughs> targets this year. And that's it makes none of us happy because he doesn't have the physical capabilities to do something special with it on the field. But obviously he's good. In, let me read you his fantasy finishes all the way back from 2015 because th- this is a little surprising to me. Okay, he was the tight end nine, tight end six, tight end three, mm-hmm. tight end two, tight end five, and then last year. Last year he was the tight end 32. He missed a couple, He missed five games, so he only played in 11 games. And so he... He is one year removed from being a top five tight end, and he is dead to everyone. Complete, like, tight end 82. I don't care. He's off the board. And I I think this is a worthy time to bring it up because here's the truth. He's available on your waivers right now. Yes, you, he is. You, have you drafted? He's available on your waivers. Have you? Are you drafting this next week? He's going to be on your waivers after the draft. And I think he has the potential to be the, you know, 
a top 12 tight end via Jason Witten style. Like Jason Witten had three top six years and then he just went 10, 11, 12, 10, 12. Like PPR does a lot to stabilize that position. So it hurts to have to tell you this, Mike. Look, but. I have come to terms with that this is an actual possibility. I have, <laughs> I, I, I have been left, speaking to your. I have cleared a space in my underwear drawer <laughs> that, that this this possibility <laughs> exists. Uh, but I'm just glad that you're the one who had put your name on it because oh, I was no. not going to do well, that. Now the flip side, I read his career fantasy finish for tight end, but to. To your point, Mike, yes. if you look at how bad last year it was, was horrific. He did play in eleven games. So he he missed he missed five games, but he played in eleven. You want to guess how many times he was in the top, let's say, fifteen tight ends? I not 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 like a real good fantasy finish, right. just top fifteen on a week. I believe it's once or twice. You would be right with your first answer. It was yeah. one single time. Oh, I I yes. This if you're just if you're brand new to the show, I Went very heavy in the paint for Zach Ertz last year, and he broke my heart, and I will never forgive him. He was still on pace for 111 targets, though. But he wasn't catching any I of them. I know, <laughs> I know. But his, his, yeah, we'll we'll not talk about him anymore. Thank we'll you. move yeah. forward. Uh, it, but the, uh, there is a name that I do want to highlight real quick that none of us picked. He's in, a, but he's in our candidate list, and it's Donald Parham Jr. for the Los Angeles Chargers. And this is starting tight end. Yeah, this is look at what the path is. Yes, they brought Jared Cook in. But we don't know for sh is Jared Cook the guy? Is Jared Cook washed? And what we know about the Chargers, Keenan Allen is the number one wide receiver. Who's the number two guy? Mike Williams, I think. Joshua his name, his name does have a question mark at the end of it so, officially now. And that's the point of finding these types of tight ends is who's the number two option? And, yep. and, and, and if that is a question mark, then that tight end becomes interesting. Justin Herbert used Hunter Henry a ton. Yes. Like, we can't forget. That's the reason why we were excited about the Cook signing potentially is this, like, targets have to go someplace. I have heard nothing about Jared. Like, I forget that Jared Cook exists. There has been no no news in any way, shape, or form. It's not like he's been injured or doing something special or being bad. It's just, like, crickets. Yeah. Crickets from the Chargers. All right. We are going to jump in the time machine one more time. We're going to look for 2021's Kirk Cousins. What does that mean? That means a late to undrafted quarterback that could see a spike in touchdown rate and has some young ascending talent at wide receiver. So Cousins had a kind of career year last year, touchdown wise. And look, I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm going to let Jason go first. And Jason's pick is the right answer to me. So uh, I have a backup. But I agree with Jason 100% here. I am happy that this that we're getting the chance to talk about this player because we really haven't said Baker Mayfield's name hardly at all this offseason. He hasn't been a late-round target. This is a run-first team, a team that looks competitive, but they are, uh, you know, they – they want to they want to run the ball 500 times a game and throw the ball twice and just you know jam it down your down your mouth um <laughs> your food hole down your food I'm hole i'm not sure what you were going to say <laughs> but baker mayfield i think he's he didn't want to go with throat he didn't want to go with the on <laughs> right. the nose cliche right. yeah I'm jam it down your mouth jam, down your jam hole um baker mayfield is is I think a, a pretty good quarterback. I think if if the things change like last year, Kirk Cousins, well, he was on a run first team that was a defense and run team. That's why we didn't like him. But it turned out his defense wasn't as good as we thought. He had to play catch up, and that could happen if, if the defense of the Browns doesn't take that leap forward. And teams that he's playing, like the Steelers, twice their offense does. Now maybe he's got to catch up. And my point is, I think he can do it. I think he can actually have good passing efficiency. You always know that Jarvis Landry is a very, very good wide receiver two for a team to have, for a quarterback to have, and now they finally have a wide receiver one back. Donovan People-Jones looks great. Um, and then you've got Odell Beckham somewhere yes, there does. as well. So I think the wide receiver core can come together. What's his name again? <laughs> Donovan Peoples-Jones. There you go. Um the wide receiver one for the Cleveland Browns. Um, oh my Did you say gosh. wide receiver one? Yeah. yeah oh that's the point. Jarvis is a good two. 
that doesn't um, fit the whole uh, story of Baker. Um, last year, he had two two top three performances in a row against Tennessee and Baltimore. Uh, there are rumblings that this team is going to change and give more to Baker. You get Beckham back, and you didn't think that that was possible with Buffalo last year. You just we coming yeah. into the year it was 200 attempts, running identity, mm -hmm. running Josh Allen, defense wins championships. If you are, I think Kevin Stefanski is one of the smartest coaches in football. If you're paying attention, you see what Buffalo's doing. You don't count on the fact that your defense is going to be everything every game. This is 2021. The NFL is played on the offensive side of the football. You're not competing with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen with Miles Garrett alone and Nick Chubb. You need to throw the football. And so I am 100% in your camp on Mayfield being that guy this year. And, um, you know, his touchdown rate, I think, was in the fours. And if you ask, you know, Kirk's jumped up to like 6.2, I think, or 5.8. So you're just talking about a small jump in touchdown rate with some more volume. My pick is is Sam Darnold. Uh, if it's not Baker, it's Darnold. He was a 2.5% touchdown rate last year. Oh, man, that is That's so bad. <laughs> that is and so you, bad. you try to fit in the young ascending talent. And you go, you put Terrace Marshall and you put DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson and Dan Arnold uh, and Christian McCaffrey's Postman. return. Like, yeah. So I'll just throw that out there, Mike. Um, who's your pick? Uh, I'm, I'm going with a seasoned veteran quarterback who is surrounded by young ascending talent at the wide receiver position. I'm going with Ben Roethlisberger. It's, it's not like he hasn't done it before the offense clearly had to change some things up and his arm was not anywhere close to the uh the Ben Roth Roethlisberger cannon arm that we're used to seeing and everything was checked down everything was a low average depth of target except for a, a couple shots here and there to chase Claypool down the field but he still threw he still threw the ball for over 3,800 yards he had a, a decent touchdown percentage like it didn't turn into week in and week out consistency. You know, he was only in he was only a quarterback one five times, which is kind of shocking when you look at his end of uh end of year season numbers, but the talk of his arm seems to be more healed now from the surgery that he had two years ago. Last year to rehab, they were saying he had to throw the ball nonstop, trying to get things back and ready maybe he was already arm fatigued by the time the football season actually started and that is not the case now so it just with the weapons around him I think that Roethlisberger can surprise and go from this essentially undrafted quarterback to easily finishing right around that QB 9 QB 10 spot I ended up with Matthew Stafford late I was the last team to take a quarterback in yesterday's listener league draft 14 team draft mm-hmm uh, but my plan was Big Ben late. I mean, that was oh, interesting. That's where I was going to go. I ended up going Stafford because I had Cooper Cup and kind of wanted the sure. stack. Um, but I I could see it. Uh, that's one of those. Our quick question on the sh on the green room yesterday was like, what player or team situation has changed the most in your mind? Like, it, it's definitely good vibes on the the Steeler offense. So uh, that makes a ton of sense. Well, I mean, we're back. In present day now. Oh, thank goodness. And I think we've learned a lot. So. Enjoy. Enjoy that information for the future. Yes. <laughs> Place your bets. <laughs> Definitely didn't look at last year's episode at all. I don't know if it went <laughs> well or not. But uh, we want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting today's podcast. Derek Henry signed Titans mini helmet. My first round pick in the listener league. $50. Right now, ends Tuesday night. Justin Jefferson signed jersey ends Tuesday night. It's at 50 bucks as well. You can check that out. Um, hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. The thing about the time machine is maybe we saw just a different timeline. Oh, like the alternate 1985? Yeah, yeah so results not guaranteed. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. This episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and for unlimited time, save over 50% when you order the Deluxe Grill Out Assortment. Plus, get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and enjoy the last cookout of the summer. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS.